Good morning, guys. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It looks like things were lagging a bit at the very beginning there, but I, can, I think I can hear you now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's good. So, by the way, on Friday, I went to the airport and I get distracted. And I didn't uh, put the grid on. Uh, did you manage to check your grids, guys? Okay, okay, yeah, I forget uh, um, because I uh, supposed to go to pick up someone right after class and I forget after that. And I didn't, oh God, I didn't keep my promise, I say. <laughs> anyway, by the way, how was the quiz three? Was it long or short? Mm -hmm. Yes. They are not fast. That's it. You say it right. Uh, it will take up the time, but the amount of time that I gave you, was it adequate or not? For you, for you, just a second. I uh, know, uh, Charlie. I was worried, so it will give me an indicate as an indicator when I prepare the final examination in the test three. That's why. Yeah. I I agree. I think actually on the past, like pretty mm -hmm. much on all your exams, actually the the time has been generous, but that's been just just right for me. Okay, good. The reason why I did it is uh, actually <laughs> you guys lucked out. Uh, if it was in the classroom, I am really strict when it comes to, uh, to time also but now one you are at home and you can easily distract it and second also that just to uh, not really to infringe your confidence level i try to give generous amount of time uh, so uh, but in the future when you go to the university and so on please be ready there is a time constraint all the time okay I don't want to be me, be the spoiler, and then, oh God, this guy didn't really prepare me for that. I don't want to hear that, okay? My goal is, it's not only just teaching you this, to establish confidence and lead you wherever you are going and be successful. Okay, now, having said that, yeah, last week on Friday, we talk about divergence and Divergence uh, is nothing, but uh, it is the amount of, uh, or it is a flux density, or the amount of really flux going per unit uh, time. Uh, so how do we recalculate really divergence? And by the way, divergence is a scalar quantity and uh, if you remember the Cartesian uh, form of divergence, if oh, the pen is not really working, uh, okay. if you have uh, f of x, y, z, a vector field. Uh, in the form of actually P I uh, plus Q J plus R uh, K. Then the divergence of F is simply DP DX plus DQ DY plus DR that is what we do. So for us, actually, to remember divergence uh, easily, you can really write it like this. You have the del operator dotted with the vector uh, field F. So 
what does that mean? It is not really the general operator that uh, this, it is not the regular dot product that you are using the norm of the first vector multiplied by the norm of the second vector uh, times the cosine of theta. It's a little bit different. What you are doing is you have the general operator, which is d of dx, the i component plus d of dy, delta y, the j component, and delta of delta z of the k component. And so, and then now, divergence of f equals del dot f, that is going to be Okay, you have this. Then, when you are taking the dot product, i dot i is really uh, one, therefore you have that is how uh, really works. Okay. And now, what is really the divergence term? That is what we have to uh, really focus on. Uh, well, this is an extension or the higher dimension of fundamental term of calculus. In analogous way, the divergence terms gives us the relationship between triple integral over the solid region, uh, W, and the surface integral over uh, the surface of that uh, solid region. In the uh, statement of the theorem, the surface S has to be closed uh, in a sense that it forms the complete boundary of the solid Q. The region bounded by, uh, I mean, regions uh, bounded by a sphere, ellipse, cube, tetrahedron, or a combination of all of these surfaces. Okay, let me actually bring uh, our textbook and show you a few of them. Uh, just like this, you have the sphere. This is really a simple uh, surface uh, bounding the solid, the interior film, or the cylinder. The top and the bottom is sealed, and the lateral surface, or like this, the cube. But it has to be small. So what do you do? Well, what you are going to do is really the first one is uh, flex out of W equals the surface integral FDA. We have calculated and we have done this so many times. Now, how do we really change it uh, into triple integral? Well, flex out of box or flux density equals volume, uh, flux density multiplied by volume. That is the divergence uh, uh, multiplied with delta volume or volume element. Then what happens is when you are really calculating in each, for example, these two boxes, this is the interior. Once you calculate these, the outward will be in this direction. For this one, the outward will be on the other direction. They cancel out. And likewise, all the rest. And then what happens? That volume integral relates to the surface. So the divergence theorem states like this. If, by the way, it is a poor notation, again, uh, next this one, double integral symbol, and here, triple integral symbol. I mean, uh, in our textbook, they are using this uh, uh, to avoid confusion. As I told you, you can write it with two and three integral symbols with this uh, right side. Okay, if W is a solid region whose boundary S is a piecewise smooth surface, and if F is a smooth vector field on an open region containing W and S, then the double integral of the vector field dotted with the vector element, we know that this is actually 
the normal vector multiplied by the scalar area equals the triple integral over that solid. That means the divergence of F times dv, where S is given in outward orientation. Always the normal is coming outwards, and that is how we do it. So here is what my plans are today. I will give you the first two examples uh, to show you that uh, the, uh, calculating the flux using double and the triple integral. In other words, verifying the divergence theorem. And then, actually, I encourage you to do whenever you are given the flux over a surface, is it better to do it with triple integral? or go ahead and do with uh, actually double integral or, or surface integral. That kind of decision you are going to make. But for comparison, first let us verify. Is that okay guys with you? Just like we did with the Green's theorem. What did I do? I have shown you with the <coughs> line integral and the surface integral at the same time. And here we do the same thing. So uh, let us do an uh, example. And here it is. By the way, guys, stop me if things are not clear right away, because this is new material, and I want to make sure everybody understood what is going on. OK, compute the flux f, uh, the flux of f, which is equal to zk through s. That means a sphere with radius r is equal to two, centered at the origin and oriented outward using A, surface integral, B, divergence theorem. But in the future, or in your textbooks, or on warm up problem, they will not give you A, B. What they, so, uh, they uh, will tell you, or I will ask you to do during the test also, verify divergence theorem. If you are asked to verify, that means you have to do it both ways, not only one. And both answer has to be the same. Okay, well, let us really uh, draw first the uh, surface. And simple as a reference for us. And if it was not a sphere, why draw the picture? Because I need the projection on the x, y plane. That is why. x, y, and z, this is two units. All right. And then now, what is really given to me? The given is f, the vector field which is zk, and let me write it in a component form. And the surface S, uh, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to four. Now, let us do A, which is the dot product of the vector field with the vector area element. In other words, this is F dotted with unit normal. In this case, because it is a spherical coordinate system, the R normal is really coming outward like this. So it has X y and the component and then now what will uh, be happening as you know the n is going to be r divided by the norm of r here this vector and we have done this so many times and in spherical coordinates i mean the radius is two and divided by the magnitude of that radius two so the uh, radius component is cancelled so we have sine of phi, cosine of theta, that is the x component, and sine of phi, sine of theta, that is the y component, and cosine of phi, 
that is the Z component of the inner home. And uh, as you know, DA in a spherical coordinate system, it is R squared sine uh, phi d phi d theta. And as you know, R is two, two squared is four. So we have four sine of phi uh, d phi d theta. Okay, F now has to be parameterized in terms of R, theta, and phi. And remember, why we need to parameterize? The reason why we need to parameterize is this surface is a function of three variables and the vector field also. It has X, Y, and Z component. So when we are parameterizing actually from three, double integral is what integral with two variables so we are really reducing that parameter that is the whole thing so and fr theta now having said that that was zero zero and z is according to our parameterization it is becoming what two times cosine of phi so now we have done all the needy greedy stuff uh, that means f dotted with the unit normal multiplied by dA. And this is going to be when you take the dot product of this uh, and this, look, these components are going to be zero, and these are going to be zero. So we have actually two times cosine squared of phi. Is it clear, guys? Are you following me? Okay. So we have this. And then now, dA is actually, we already have, and we put it here, four times sine of phi d phi d theta. Okay, well, let, I, let me simplify this one. As you see, four times two is eight, cosine squared of phi, sine of phi d phi, and d theta. Okay, one thing, uh, what is really left is, uh, setting up the uh, integral, the flux is going to be uh, this, uh, the integrand is this one, but one thing is really missing, what that missing is, actually I have to set up the boundary. What are changing? Well, theta and phi are changing. So, uh, theta and phi, uh, are the one which is changing. So what is theta? The boundary. It is moving. If the point is over here, it's moving around. So it is from uh, zero up to two pi. And the phi is, we always start from positive the axis and go to negative the axis. And that is from zero to two pi. Uh, two pi, I'm sorry. That's it. So now flux equals the double integral over the surface F dot dA. This one is integral from zero to two pi, from zero up to pi, and that is eight cosine squared of phi, sine of phi, d phi, d theta. Okay, <clears throat> well, this one actually is very simple integral because we can use u substitution. Let our u be cosine. The derivative of cosine is a negative sign. Therefore, as a result by u substitution integral, okay, let me write eight out of the integral 
from 0 up to 2 pi and that is 1 over 3 with negative cosine cubed of theta and evaluated from 0 to pi d theta. All right. And by the way, <clears throat> okay, 8 I have and negative 1 over 3 cosine cubed of pi minus uh, cosine cubed of theta. And that's it. And by the way, this one, uh, uh, also the integral uh, of d theta is theta uh, from 0 to 2 pi. And this is evaluated from 0 to pi. Uh, well, actually, I put already that integral multiplication here. I don't know what I'm writing. Sorry. All right. So as you know, cosine of pi is negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So you have 8 times negative 1 over 3, negative 1, minus cosine of uh, 0. Cosine of 0 is 1, so minus 1. And this one is 2 pi. All right, this negative will make it positive, 2. And that is uh, 2 over 3. And 4 over 3 times 4 times 8 is 32. And that's it. This is using what? The surface integral. And now, how about using the uh, volume integral? And we better come up with the same result. So the triple integral of w uh, over w the divergence of f dv well as you know f is actually z k which is r uh, p uh, q r uh, that we are doing so divergence of f equals the del operator on the vector phi, uh, f. And in other words, dp, dx, which is zero, dq, delta q, delta y, that is also zero. And we have delta r, delta z. That is actually uh, simply one. That means 0 plus 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. So then the flux equals the triple integral of 1 dv. That means the triple integral of dv, simply. Well, this uh, is actually what a sphere, and we know that volume sphere is of a sphere is what four over three pi r cubed. Do we all agree with that? And that will give us four over three pi times two cubed. Two cubed is eight, and that is what we get thirty two over three pi. All right, so from here, we verified actually the divergence theorem, which is really telling us the flux integral, the surface integral of the vector field dotted with vector area element equals the triple integral over W, which is uh, divergence of F dv which we get 32 over 3 pi and that's it
Okay, that will give us, by the way, uh, we are going to take the dot product. By the way, this is surface one. Let me call it this one, surface one, and this is S2, surface two. Okay, and that is the integral along uh, the uh, surface, that means this, that is what I'm going to really do, by the way, when I'm going to uh, bring this circle, let me draw it here, uh, a small reference, this is 2, negative 2, 2 and negative 2, and this is y is equal to square root of 4 minus x squared, and this is y equals negative of square root of 4 minus x squared. All right. So x is changing from negative 2 up to 2, and y is changing from this negative radical to this positive radical. So we have that uh, limit of integration taken care of. And then when we do that, what is really happening? Uh, this is what I have one. For the second one, uh, let me write this one uh, first. Uh, that means I have uh, two x, the f vector is actually two z i plus x j plus y squared k multiplied by this 2x i plus 2y j plus k over the square root. Oh my God, I don't have enough room. It's all right. Multiplied by actually square root of 4x squared plus 4y squared plus 1 and dx dy or dy dx. So this will be cancelled by this one, then we multiply the numerator. So when you multiply this uh, 2x with 2j, it is giving us 4xz. And this one will give us 2xy. And y squared k. So that means y squared simply. And that is dA. This is along S1. By the way, S1 uh, is a projection here. We are going to uh, get that. OK, let's see along S2. And I'm going to combine it and do it together. Uh, N2, first of all, N2 is what? Negative K. And then when we take actually the dot product, uh, this and this, that means what? Uh, zero, zero, negative one, dotted with two z, x, and y squared. And that is d, a. And that is negative y squared. So, the integral along s, FDA is going to be what? S1 plus S2. So the DA is the same. Now this will give me integral. Let us really put the limit of integration. From negative 2 up to 2 is the X changing, the Y changing from negative square root of 4 minus x squared up to positive 4 minus x squared. 
And then now when we combine these two, I have negative, okay, I'm sorry, 4xz plus 2xy plus y squared minus y squared for this one, and this is going to be dA, dy dx. Okay. Well, then as you see, this is really cancelled. Negative y squared and y squared. So I will have negative 4 minus x squared to positive 4 minus x squared. And what do I have? x, z, that means 4 times, and plus 2xy dy dx okay we are integrating with respect to y and x but we have here z but the good thing is we have relationship between uh, z can be written as a function of x and y then what will happen negative 2 up to 2 integral from negative 4 minus x squared under radical to positive 4 minus x squared under radical that's it and this is 4x, 4 minus x squared minus y squared, multiplied by, uh, plus 2 times xy. And that is dy dx. Okay, when I multiply this, what do I get? Integral from negative 2 up to 2, and the same integral. And this is 16 x minus 4 x cubed minus 4 x y squared plus 2 x y dy dx. So I have four terms and that's it. And now let us go ahead. Is it clear so far what I'm doing, guys? Because I am going to flip the page. Okay. So let me rewrite the uh, 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 problem so we can have a follow up. Uh, the flex F. Uh, after we did all that work from negative two up to 2, and integral from negative of the radical of 4 minus x squared up to the positive of radical of 4 minus x squared, and that is 16x minus 4x cubed minus 4xy squared plus 2xy yeah, dy dx. Okay, if we want, uh, actually, we can uh, change it into polar form as it is, or we can. Uh, change it into, uh, uh, I mean, we can evaluate it as it is and then see what is really uh, happening. And by the way, if you really integrate, evaluate this one with respect to y, here you have 16xy, and here you have negative 4x cubed y, and here you have negative uh, 4xy cubed, and here you have uh, two, uh, I'm sorry, x, y squared, that's it. And when you are really plugging the positive and the negative, this is going to be symmetry. That means wherever positive value will carry over positive, wherever it is negative, it will be negative over here and uh, alternating sign. So they will be canceled out each other by symmetric. So it will be integral from negative two up to two 
and that means d0 dx and this integral is zero. That is what you can really do. Or if you want, change it into polar form, all right? Let x uh, uh, is equal to r cosine of theta, y is equal to r sine of theta, and theta is changing from zero to two pi, r is changing from zero to two, and then you can evaluate, and you still get the same answer, whichever you feel comfortable with. That's why we were drilling double and triple integral for so many times, so you can handle this one. Okay, on the other hand, let us see the divergence of f. In other words, I'm going to differentiate with respect to x that 2z, the x component, and plus I'm going to differentiate the y component if it's x with respect to y, x, plus I'm going to differentiate the z component which is y squared, dz, y squared. And when you differentiate actually 2z with respect to x, you get zero. When you differentiate x with respect to y, you get another zero. When you differentiate y squared with respect to z, you'll get zero, 30. So the sum is zero. Then the double integral, f dot da, can be evaluated over the volume w, the divergence of f dv, which is the integral over the origin w, that means zero dv. So the integral of zero is zero, and that's it. So look how divergence theorem is really very handy and simplify our life. Uh, actually. So if you change the double integral in, into triple integral, it is really very quick and easy in this case. Clear, guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. That means the flux is zero. The outgoing and the inflow are balanced. That means, do you remember when we talk about? Uh, yes, yes. Look at here. For example, in this case, what you have is negative uh, divergence. It is inflow. Yes. And here you have positive and the negative going outward. Yes. And here the. Uh, I mean, this is outgoing, it is positive. But on the other hand, if you see, some of them are going out and some of them are coming. Look, the outgoing and the incoming are the same here. It's coming from the side and it goes that direction. Therefore, inflow and outflow are balanced. That means what? It is zero, yes? Or just like this also, constant vectors field which is really moving uh, horizontally constant or something like that. That's also. So that is what it means. Make sense? All right, good. Now, since I showed you whichever is really easy and you can really do now, simply find the flex, I said. That means you can use either double or triple integral and solve the problem. Find the flux through the vector field F, which is given by X plus sine of Z I, uh, 2Y plus cosine of X J, plus 3Z plus tan uh, of Y K. Over the surface S, that is surface is a sphere of radius R, that is two. The radius R is two, and it's centered at the origin and oriented outwards. In other words, I gave you with spherical uh, surface, but now I change the function. So find the flux. All right. 
sorry <laughs> sometimes <laughs> i read it and i don't uh, stare to my screen and i don't see what you are reading in the, okay actually let me cover this one i don't want to be blurry with other uh, right up Okay, guys, we ran out of time, copy the problem and uh, finish it at home and come uh, with the answer tomorrow, all right? And we will start from here. Please remind me. Is that okay? All right, thank you, guys. I hope this helped you. And uh, you saw how instrumental is actually the Gauss divergence theorem. And it is actually what? The higher dimension of fundamental theorem of calculus. As you know, fundamental theorem of calculus, what do you have? If a function has a continuous antiderivative and when you are evaluating it, and uh, the result depends on starting and end point. And then we come up with the Green's theorem. Okay, when you are uh, really calculating the uh, flex through the curve, and if that curve is uh, closed, then what do you do? Uh, well, the fundamental theorem of calculus part one first. If you have potential function and this is gradient, then actually what depends? It is independent of buzz, it depends pass, it depends on what? The end and the starting point evaluated. And likewise on Green's theorem, what you are really getting on the closed curve and the area in, in the interior are giving you the same result, that's it. And then now the divergence theorem, actually the flux through the surface is the same as actually the volume in, in the interior, the volume integral in the interior. So the end point, or in this case, the thing that is surrounding actually give you the amount that you are really finding in the interior or in between. That is what it means in simple layman interpretation. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks.